the Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. It's time to kick some ass, and it's your girl, Dr. Brandy here, and I have my new friend, Vin A., with me, and we're going to talk about (laughs) family traditions, and what does that even mean? How do we even work with our family? We're going to get down to it. It's here at the Strategic Hot Box. As you know, we learn, we love, and we kick ass, and no one better to learn love and kick ass with than your family, and whether that family is your actual family or you're creating a family together in the people that you work with, if you think about it, you know, learning and loving are intertwined at work because you're, you're, you spend more time at work than you do at home. I mean, literally, for those of you that have the nine to five jobs, you're there in your daylight hours more time than you are with your families. And so some of us will end up having a work spouse or a brother from another mother, or you have these, these people, these dynamic, these chain, these, these families that end up happening at work. And then I think that as some listeners know, I also work with my actual family and, and the dynamics of having a family is is an interesting one. And I, I love working with my family. One, because they'll probably be listening to this and I would never ever put on record otherwise. No, but I my family it kicks ass and I and it's it's a relationship that we've been very fortunate to have over the years. Not without challenges, of course, but it is one that is is built on trust. And and we've had to continue to work through those dynamics throughout the years. So some of the things that I think are great and some of the things that I think are challenges. And I'll talk through some of those and then we'll bring on Vin A here and, and hear what his his thoughts are in it as well. So what's great about family is first that you they they always have your back and they fight your front line. So I, I kind of frame it as if the building was burning down, they're going to save me first. Right. So if, if, if my family employs a bunch of employees and I happen to be one of those, then if the building's burning down, they're going to save me. Right. So if, they, if, they, if it all comes down to it, I'm, I'm going to be one of the people that saves. And I think that that's an important distinction. That is an important relationship, a deep relationship that you don't always have with some of your employees. And that's that's a great relationship to have. And there, you have somebody at work that's willing to fight the front line for you. And that's a deep and strong relationship. On the challenging end of that is I think there's additional scrutiny that comes with having family. They're harder on you than they might be with, that with other people. Your brother can say things to you that other employees would never dare say to you and your, your family members would say to you. I also am so sick of the word nepotism that, you know, if I'm going to refer, and so I uh, work with my mom and she happens to be amazing and she's a, you know, legend, she's a gangster. And I, if I were to refer business to her, I'm referring business to her because she's amazing, not because she's my mom. And people should understand and respect that. And I think that that old idea of nepotism is, is a silly one. You know, one of the other challenging pieces is say goodbye to Holly days because no longer will you be able to do anything personally without having some sort of conversation around around business. But there's a lot and I can't wait to dig into it. And I don't really want to spend too much uh, more time, you know, getting into this without bringing in this person that's sitting right next to me because I'm so excited about that. And so I want to formally talk to and introduce Vin A, who is uh, a founder and co-creator of the nationally acclaimed touring band, The Bronx Wanderers. And you are a songwriter, a frontman and producer for your own band, Vinay, as well as the founder of Which Way Records. And you're also the host of uh, What the Cluck with <laughs> Vinay. It's a produced with Brain Casting Company Network and broadcasting live from Bally's Hotel and Casino. You're a performer, you're an artist, and you happen to work with a few family members. I do, I do, I do. I guess me and you have a lot of shared gray hairs. <laughs> yeah, the, well, covered, covered, dyed, <laughs> dyed and beautifully covered. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm so, so excited that here. you are here. And so tell us about your journey in music and in leadership. Sure. Yeah, my dad was a, a record executive for about 30 years. So growing up, he always had guitars on the wall, crates of music that nobody would hear. Uh, <laughs> he was like the Simon Cowell back in the day. He would listen to a band and go, you should sign these guys, you should not sign these guys. Um yeah, so he had a great career. I met a lot of awesome people growing up with him. I stole all those guitars off the walls and learned them all every chance I could get. My brother, the same thing with drums. He would steal all the pots and pans out of the kitchen, and we'd come home and hear him banging on a makeshift drum set. So my dad knew we were musically inclined growing up with him. And uh, 
So one day, you know, his whole illustrious career goes by and the bosses come in and say they're retiring. Mm. So he's 40 years old. He has no idea what the hell he's going to do. Uh, and one of his friends, uh, Chaz Palminteri, the guy from a Bronx tale goes up to him and says, why don't you create a band with the kids? And my dad says, dude, it's never going to work. My older son's 14. My younger son's 11. Like it's not going to happen. He goes, come on, it'll be a cool gimmick. You know, it'll be good, which totally we did suck back then. Right. But, you know, luckily, uh, <laughs> Doing it a lot every day, we got better and better and better. And my brother was the first to join the band. He filled in for my dad's drummer at the time. And he was just a little 11 year old kid playing music from 70 years ago. Wow. And everybody like was flipping their, flipping their shit. And my brother comes home with like $800 in tips. Wow. So all these older people are throwing $100. Yeah, yeah. In. And there I was that same day working at Pizza Express making $7.50 an right. hour. Like, I need in on so this. I said, you know what? I need to get in on that. Uh -huh. So the next thing you know, we we started the Bronx Wanders in 2006. Uh, we would play in bars and restaurants till 2 in the morning. I'd have to get up at 7 for school. Mm. Same thing with my brother. And we worked really hard while all our friends were out, you know, partying and getting drunk on the weekends. We were touring. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be in Pennsylvania. I'd be in Utah. I'd be in California. I'd be doing this, doing that. And lo and behold, 15 years of hard work later, here we are in Las Vegas headlining on the strip. You know, it's pretty it's cool. Unbelievable. It's, yeah, it's a little rags to riches story. I haven't seen the riches yet. You'll get there. You'll we've get come there. Come to something. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's amazing. It's a cool journey. So has it, have, what has it been like working with family? It's, uh, it's like you said before in your opening monologue, it's, it's, it's amazing to know that you have people that are going to fight that front line for you. Mm -hmm. It's great that you can be totally honest at all times. Mm -hmm. You know, like when, when you have a regular boss, you got to know what to say, how to say it, when mm -hmm. to say it. Uh, with family, you can go, yo, dad, no, that's bullshit. Right. No, we're, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, Vin, I want to do Copacabana. Dad, I love you. We're not doing no. Copacabana. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> He went and saw Barry Manilow and he's like, we should really do this song. I go, dad, you can't just, you know, do everybody's stuff. You gotta, we gotta have our own thing. So, you know, we fight, we do our thing, but at the end of the day, uh, you're all working in the same direction. Mm -hmm. You're all heading towards that same goal. And yeah, it's totally hard at times, but. It's nice yeah. having a confidant, though, too, isn't it? Because I, yeah. I love being able to talk to someone that knows my bullshit, yeah. that knows my industry, that knows what I'm going through, like intimately, not just listen as a friend, but knows what the what the interworkings are. Yeah, no, they know you. They know where you're coming from. They know mm -hmm. when something's wrong. And it's and even if you're not working with family, if you're working with people to that extent every day, you get to you you, know, you get to like know like bodily. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Well, like something's going on with her. Oh my! Mm -hmm. Like you know, maybe we should maybe we should talk. Hey, what's going on? You know, if you if you break through that professional and get a little personal, you can pull things out of people that normally wouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And that I think is is a great thing of working with family. They know what to pull, when to pull, when not to pull, mm -hmm. how hard to pull. You know, and and it's it's a cool thing. And and you know, together we've accomplished great things. I don't know if I could have done half the things we did by myself. Right. You know, so it's it's nice to have that support and at the same token, that insanity. Yeah, really. And it does spill over, though, into personal life, doesn't it? Oh, my God. Yeah. Because like people you can't go through the holidays without. No, without something. About it. Yeah, and so people say, oh, it must be so fun having like a grandma with your mom with your kids. And I'm like, it is, except for most of the time we end up talking business. And then we're like, oh, that's right. You hang out with my kids. And yeah, you know. we have a, we have a rule when we get together, like for dinner or the holidays, we say, OK, we've we've, sh we've shared our five minutes. Let's, let's move, move past move past the band right now because, mm -hmm. you, you know, nobody wants to turn a holiday into. In to a work holiday you know right. it's a holiday let's get away from that it's well it's the, the hard part is it's everybody else does it like i don't even mean to yeah you know? no, it's, it's, it's the other else. people you know, it's yeah show, da, 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 and it's right. like ah seven days a week i'm talking about it all right, right, right. talking about it all right fine 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 you right. know but it's cool you know it's a, one of those things, too, that you it certainly allows for the lack of negative press. You know what I mean? Like, I could never say, I don't like my mom. You know what I mean? <laughs> because it would it certainly would get back to her, and she, she, she couldn't do the same way. I mean, you couldn't be like, yeah, my brother's a real pain in the ass. <laughs> because He is a real pain in the ass, and it, can, and, it could, and it could totally get back to me. Now, uh, that's, you know, our whole, our whole rule is never take ourselves too seriously. Mm-hmm. So we'll be honest. We'll be like, dude, you're doing something really stupid. Come on, come on. You mm -hmm. know, and he'll be like, all right, I'm doing something stupid. Yeah. You know, but if, if you just look at somebody like a stranger and go, all right, they're just going to be stupid. They're mm -hmm. just going to do their own thing. Okay. They're going to go their own direction. 
then everybody's going to start to go their own direction. Then the next thing you know, it's like it's it's chaos. So it's mm -hmm. nice. You got to reel people in. You got to be like, dude, you know, we'll, we'll get into sibling stuff later. But <laughs> a couple of days ago, because we share our room with Matt Franco, who's an amazing magician. And sometimes he does two shows a day. So our schedule is all over the place. Mm -hmm. One night I'll do 9.15. One night I'll do 8 o'clock. One night I'll do 4 o'clock. My brother had no idea we had a Saturday show at 4 o'clock because oh. Easter was the next day. Uh -huh. we, we're usually off on Saturday. Oh, okay. So I usually walk in 10 minutes before I have a dressing room. I come in and my brother's usually sitting there and he's not sitting there. I go, hmm, maybe he's going over stuff with the band. And then I go to the back and, and I see his ear back there to hear the show and it's sitting there. And I go, wow, that's like never really sitting there. I look at the band. I go, have any, have any of you seen Nick? They go, no, we never see Nick. We just, you know, start the show and he's there. He's, oh, okay, Nick, do you know there's a show? He goes, what do you mean it's a show? It's Saturday. We're off. Oh, I go, no. Nick, we're, we're on stage in one minute. Oh, no. He goes, all right, I'll get there, buddy. I go, okay. Uh, so I look at the guys in the band. I go, all right, so who wants to play drums? Oh, my goodness. You know, so we're looking at each other going, can you do that? I go, yeah, I can do that, but I need to do that for this part. Uh, okay, uh. So our sax player, all of us luckily play like, you know, two to three instruments, which is cool. My sax player looks at us and goes, you know, I can I can cover at least the first four songs. Mm. We go, all right, bro, you're the drummer, go. Oh, go drum. My goodness. You know, and then I'm like to Dave during the song. By the way, the sax solo, dude, you got to do that on your guitar. Right. So we're all there just like going with the flow. I'm freaking out. I've had about seven heart attacks in the first mm -hmm. six songs. I'm like trying not to curse out my brother in my head. But again, it's... All the time slots are all over the place. It's the first Saturday we've ever worked. I totally right. get it. Uh, he comes on stage, and it's so cute. He's, he's in his pajamas. We had <laughs> He had no time to change. Oh, he just So he's in his sweatpants. Pants. He's in his Ugg slippers. Oh, um, no. Yeah, and the first song that he comes back and does, he's at the front of the stage at me doing Rock This Town by Brian Setzer. Uh -huh. So he's got a stand-up kit. I got my guitar, and we got a stand-up bass. So there he is with his pajamas in front of the whole crowd. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we come clean to everybody and go, look, everybody, normally we have six guys in the band at the start of the show, but Nick wasn't here, and yeah, so there's a lot of stress. Did everybody just go, woo? Everybody was oh, like, sure. wow, and look at his you know, and you got to look at our sax player that was, dude, the guy stepped in and was able to do drumming yeah, on those first right, songs, which is unbelievable, like you right. know? So uh, yeah, we have a lot of those fun moments. Do you think that you give him, a, you gave him in that moment more leeway because he's your brother? Uh, I gave him as much leeway as a brother can give a brother. And then how about the ass beating that happened afterwards? Yeah, was well, that, 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 that it was it was but... it was verbal abuse. <laughs> That's how I'd like to call it. It was verbal mm -hmm. abuse. Um, I said, Nick, man, you know, look, his his wife is pregnant too. Mm -hmm. He's she's gonna they're gonna have a kid in two weeks. Wow. So there's a lot of tumultuous things going on right now. But uh, you know, dude. Everybody else is here. You got to be here. Right. You know, when you got to reel somebody in, you got to reel somebody in. Nick, man, you got to look at the schedule week out. You got to know, like, what's going on. You know, mm -hmm. I get that you're about to be a dad. I get that you got a lot of stuff going on. But, you know, it's, it's a give choice. and take. It's yeah. give and take. You know, it's, yeah. And we all go into it with that choice. And I treat him like anybody else. I go, sure. dude, if this happens again, you know, you're going to force me to look for other people. Like, I don't right. want to have to do that. Right. Because right. I've lost guys you know, for the same, if not less, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, so I, I don't want to treat family better than not family. I don't want to be known as that guy. I want right. to treat everybody like family. And he would do the same for you, obviously. Yeah. He'd probably smack me in the face, but yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah so I no think more. that we have to, we have to do that. And that's one thing that I've, I've talked to with different people that work with family. And I was talking to uh, my husband recently about this and the fact that we have a friend that works for his in-laws. So he works for his mother-in-law who owns a very successful company cool. and he has now in the error apparent for this big business. Nice. And so now he's like locked in though to this relationship <laughs> and the fact that he can't fuck this up. No. You know what I mean? Like he's he's in this place of this is this is the future. Now your personal life, your career life, your everything is now. It's all together. And so I my husband says to me, he's like, What would it be like if I worked for my in laws? <laughs> and I looked at him, he's like, I probably do a lot more drugs. <laughs> number or one, we'd make you a saint. Number two, <laughs> yeah. we'd give you a lot of Prozac. And yeah. number three, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. good luck. And so it's a it's it, it in some ways, family, it ends up becoming where they're it's all or nothing. And not everybody could have that relationship. They have to be able to have those open conversations. It really, it really depends on the person and the relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you're open, I'm open. Mm -hmm. You know, if if you keep things bottled up, you keep things inside, it's it's gonna grow in you like a cancer. Right. And again, as open as I am, things like that happen to me all the time. Where I gotta, you know what? I gotta say something.
and I'm not the best at tactfully saying things. I'm still learning how to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, because I got into this whole business because I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to, you know, do my own thing. And uh, when you come out here, you get investors, you get producers, you get all these people with their ideas and their things. And now... Now it's no longer a sole proprietorship. It's a, it's a board of directors. It's mm -hmm. a, now you need eight opinions and you need eight people agreeing on things. And it's, you know, that's the most trying thing for me mm -hmm. is being able to do the things that I want to do, the ideas that I have while having to clear that with eight other people. Mm -hmm. And four of them may not think it's a great idea. Three of them might think it's a great idea. And then I get into that whole, do I fight for it? Do I not fight for it? Do I... Do I bite my time and wait for something more important? You know, it's, mm -hmm. you got to choose your battles. And I so have you, um, have you in, in that process, you are, have become the leader. You have become the owner, the producer, you have yeah. become the, and so. Not because I want to. Was that, was that a natural progression or was that something that. It was totally natural. Yeah. Mm. You know, how do I say it? Um, some guys just want to show up and play mm -hmm. and they don't want to be involved mm -hmm. in anything else. And I respect and, and, and love them for that. And I say, look, as long as you show up, you do your job, you know, I got your back. Anything you need, you come to me, uh, because I'm in the family. I'm able to yell at the family just as much as I'm able to yell at the outside guys in the sure. band. So again, I always do that. I want to treat everybody the same. I don't treat my family any different than I treat the other guys in the mm -hmm. band. Um, yeah, I mean, it did come naturally. I'm a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a gift and a curse. Mm -hmm. You know, I, it's some things make things great. Other things, I get stuck on the same thing where if it's not right, I lose my shit. Mm -hmm. And I'll be up at nights going, but I can make it better. But I can make it better. I know I can make it better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's give and take like everything else. But, yeah, it's, it's natural. I mean, I'm learning. I'm 31. I'm young. I'm, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a half a million dollar a year business. It's it's touring it's being here it's longevity it's creativity it's my whole deal is trying to make a show for an eight-year-old as cool as an 88 year old yeah. how do you make a music show that an 88 year old can enjoy with an eight-year-old that can be cool to a 20 year old mm -hmm. that's also hip to a 40 year old mm -hmm. you know i haven't seen many shows that can do that and that was always our goal mm -hmm. with the generation gap between us how can we make something cool for everybody wow. and it's not easy you know no. some people are going to be like dude you're Show can be so much cooler. Dude, your show's really cool. Can you do more oldies? Dude, it's everybody. We're, we're trying to make everybody happy. Yeah. You know? There's a lot to that. And Along most with businesses ourselves. Don't, a lot of businesses don't do that. Don't have such a broad audience. Yes. They have a, you know, a, a target demographic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for us, it's let's go super broad and hope we can get as many people in that net as possible. Because it also is a niche market. We're doing older music in a hip new way for young people and older people. So we got to hope they got, they all dig it, mm -hmm. you know, which they have, you know, 15 years has told us that it's, it's a good product. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're happy. We're still together. So you're still getting the 80 other. year olds to take their bras off and swing them up above their heads. Funny story about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, maybe we can, can we listen to some of your music? Yeah, and you tell yeah. me about let's, this, let's totally uh, do a bra. segue into that so, scary story. <laughs> can we hear a little bit of, of Vin A's music? Yeah. And tell me what we're listening to here. This is my uh, my last album called Geology, and uh, it was a really fun album, really cool. Labor of Love. Wow, so it was a labor of love. What was it in the whole album's entitled Labor of Love? No, it's called Geology, which Ooh, geology. Uh, I called it that because uh, geology is a study of pressure and time. Yeah. Which that album took a lot of time because I was on the road a lot with the Bronx Wanderers at the time. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, the Bronx Wanderers uh. pays for my ability to do this stuff. I love that photo, too. Yeah, it's fun. I took that at Red Rock out here. Did you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, really cool. Um, and so tell us uh, about your 80 year old woman, um, taking her bra off story. <laughs> so, uh, so we used to bring people, <laughs> we used to, we used to bring people up on stage and, uh, it was this woman's 80, 80th birthday uh -huh. and she came up and she said, look, it's always been my dream to dance on a Las Vegas stage. Are you allow me to do that. And we're like, yeah, man, come on up, come on right. up. So she's dancing. She's rocking out. She's like, you know, she's been drinking. Awesome. We love it. Crowd's going uh -huh. crazy. Um, next thing you know, she's on stage dancing and she's 
trying to grab my dad's crotch. And, oh, and it's no. like my dad's like making a joke out of it, like, who, oh, you know, like, who. Oh. Uh-huh. And she's like grabbing it, man. She's like, like trying to going grab for it. it. Okay. It's, she's going for it. Her whole family's there going, grab that crotch. <laughs> you know, next thing you know, she goes up behind him and she tries to like come from under the oh, carriage. Oh my gosh. And, so she's like going crazy. We're laughing hysterical at this. Like, you know, it's the funniest shit ever. My dad like goes with that like great on stage. So at the end of it, we go, you know, da, 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 we really want to thank her for coming up to see. She goes, it's my 80th birthday. Uh-huh. The next thing you know, she looks at the whole crowd and just like <gasps> flashes everybody her, her man. Was she in a bra? She, uh, at least? she was, she was letting it all hang out. No man. bra. She was not okay. in a bra. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, that was an eye opening experience. Yeah. To say the so least. this is what you have to look forward to really is what I can't <laughs> wait, you know, and it's moments like that where, uh, you decided that you were going to continue. I look to... at people and go, we don't have groupies. We have troopies. <laughs> For life. That's that's happening. You know, oh. but we we've had a lot of a lot of crazy moments in this band, which you know. You know, all, now all that people hear this, going. you're gonna get some more droopies in your face. So I can't to, wait. So I can't tonight, wait. I welcome stage. I welcome all walks of boobage. <laughs> you know, bring it on, bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. It's like Pokemon. You got to catch them all. Uh, yeah. I, d- I don't want to. So for anyone that no, yeah, no. I'm kidding about I all this. So anybody coming need. to the show, please don't. You know we're cool. We got I don't it. need those. We Hit me it. up on Twitter. Um, so then, how can those that don't have the the bond that you've created with your family that maybe they're work either working with family and they don't have that bond, or they don't and they just have colleagues that they're working with? How can they create a deeper bond? Um, depending on the situation you're in, I mean, I know some companies don't like employees to go out together after work and mix personal and business and da 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 da. da. But uh, I think any way that you can. You know, get somewhat close with somebody, the people that you're working with is a good thing. Um, You know, there are times where I'm down and sometimes my family won't be the first to pick up on it. Mm -hmm. It'll be the outside guys in my band to pick up on it. And again, when you're with somebody six, seven days a week, it's almost like a marriage. Like you're married to like, like I look at people and they go, are you married? I go, yeah, to five guys. Yeah. (laughs) And they look at me like, you know what? I go, yeah, I have a girlfriend, but I'm with my band more than I almost am with her, Mm -hmm, which mm kind of sucks. But, you know, the the outside guys, I don't even look at them as outside guys. I look at them as family. They look, they come to me and go, you know, what's going on, man? Are you doing okay? Yeah, I'm dealing with a little, you know, friction with my dad right now. You know, things are a little tough. You know, well, well, tell me about it. What's going on? It's nice to have somebody outside the family to bounce ideas with about my family Mm -hmm. and vice versa with them. You know, Vin, some things are, are bothering me with things. I go, okay, so... Everybody's kind of the li- liaison for everybody, and I feel that makes for such a smoother work experience. If nobody's talking to anybody, that's when people start letting things build up. Sure. That's when people keep things in. That's when people let their outside problems affect their work because mm-hmm. you, you never know what a person's dealing with. If you have somebody that's working with you in the day, God forbid you don't know their mom just died. God forbid you don't know they just got divorced. God forbid you don't know, and and something's affecting their work, but you don't want to cross that line. Like, hey, uh, is everything okay? What's mm-hmm. what's going on? You know, and if they're able to talk to you and go, you know, everything's fine, but but this happened. Mm-hmm. You know, well, let's take five minutes from work, and you know, let's let's talk about this. What, what's going on? Like, tell me about it. If you show that compassion and that kindness to somebody, a they're gonna feel better. Mm-hmm. B they're gonna go to the nines to to make the work that you're doing together better. C, you developed a friendship with that person. It's it's all positive things, mm-hmm. you know? So I think it's it's like that. And with any of like my colleagues, I haven't had a real job in a long time, but from what I remember, when you spend that amount of time with people, regardless of family or not, you get close to each other, mm-hmm. you know? And it's it's a cool thing. And at the same token, you know, watch out getting too close to people. If you're a girl and a guy, yes. you know, you don't want to mix that kind of pleasure with business because God forbid something goes sour. Is that how you show that? That's yeah, that's, you, that's like my, yeah, my symbol mix. instead of yeah, yeah. that. <laughs> this is the PG version. This is the new emoji. And then we have for... the other version mm-hmm. when I was, you know, in mm-hmm. ninth grade. But, um, you know, watch what things you mix with work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it, because there's no, there's no going back from that. There's no going back. And, mm-hmm. you know, you've heard the expression, don't... Uh, don't shit where you sleep. Is that yep. the expression? Or spit into the wind. Don't or... spit into the wind. Yeah. I haven't even heard that, but yeah. I like it, but mm-hmm. I agree with it. Mm-hmm. Or pee into the wind. Either yeah. way. Either way. Yeah. Not a good idea. Either way. It's not cool. Um, and so any other crazy, funny stories? 
I don't think we have enough time on your show. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, there was this one time that we were on the road and, uh, you know, you all get keys to get into your room. Uh-huh. Well, one time we had this bass player and he was this crazy bass player. And we were in, I think, Delaware, Rhode Island. We're at a casino, and two girls started talking to him at the bar. Granted, these two girls didn't look like regular girls. They looked like working girls. Mm -hmm. So he bought time from these girls, I guess is how you can say it. And they go up to a room. Now, he was a little drunk at the time. Little did he know that his key worked from my dad's room also. Oh, no. So he's accidentally in my dad's room with these two oh, women no. of the night and my dad's tired he's uh walking into a room and he walks in and let's just say he sees a scene at a real sex on hbo oh my happening gosh. in his hotel room and he looks at my bass player and goes dude what the hell and my bass player looks at him and goes dude what the hell are you doing in my room and my dad's like do you not see my bag and all my stuff everywhere and my friend's like, what are you talking about? My my key works for this room. My dad goes, bro, I love you. Just uh, do me a favor and clothe everybody and please, please get out. <laughs> Ew, I would pick up my stuff first, Dad, and be like, I can't be in this I just, room I now. can't imagine the scene of all of them walking out. And he's like this cute little, like, you know, five foot three skinny white dude. And Aww. these women were like six foot two Amazonian. Like, you know, they oh beat the crap goodness. out of them. It was... Yeah, we still talk about that to this day, that, like, you know, the things my dad has seen. Did your dad sleep on the floor that night? My dad (laughs) definitely, uh, he checked everybody's keys from then on after that point. Yeah, no no doubt. Oh, my gosh. You know, but, yeah, it's it's fun, man. You know, it's it's a 60-year-old guy going on tour with a bunch of 20-year-olds. I mean, it's it's a major generation gap of the stories that we have and the fun moments we have. I'm sure. Can you share a bold action item or takeaway for everybody listening and watching? Sure. Um, bold action item. Uh, have a nice like niche in what you choose to do. I think always helps. You don't want to do something that a thousand people are doing. You want to be good at something that people need that not a lot of people are doing. I always felt was cool. Um, number two, for me, I have to practice this all the time is, is be tactful. Mm. Know and learn how to say things. I'm still learning how to do that. I am not a pro at that by any means. So I practice that. And number three, um, be kind. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that you work with, I mean, look at the world we live in. Look how divided we are. Look if you've even opened your mouth about politics, it turns into a hate fest. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't used to be like that. You know, I don't care if you're a conservative, Republican, if you're green, white, black, brown, purple, Asian. I don't care what you are. Just be kind. If you be kind to one another, you can't imagine... The things you can create within your business, outside of your business, in your community, in your town, it's its a ripple effect. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the more people that are kind, the more ripples we have, the better it'll be. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's, yeah. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks for having me. And how many, uh, How can people get a hold of you? Buy me a drink. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, you can uh, you can look me up everywhere. Uh, you can look me up at um, Instagram, Vinay A Music. You can uh, go to the website, whichwayrecords.com. Uh, come see the Bronx Wander Show in Vegas uh, if you're ever out here. We're also on the road. Go to thebronxwanders.com. And, um, and what the cluck. And what the cluck. You know, yeah, tune in for that. So that'll be fun. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for being a part Thanks of the show me, today. Randy. So Let's much. Let's head out to our shout out. Thank you to Son of a Digger for that shout out. I'm pretty sure that he won that freestyle competition that night that he gave us that shout out. So thank you to Son of a Digger and thank you to Vin A for being here with us and talking about the family tradition. So it's that time. It's time for us to talk about how to kick some ass. Number one is to create a family. If you don't have a family at work, it's time for us to think about how do we create one and build those bonds 
deepen those relationships that, that Vin A was talking to us about? And how do we continue to, to really build those relationships in the organization that we're in? We do spend a lot of time with the people that we work with. Number two is fight the front line. And that is such a powerful thing that happens in family relationships and in people that you really have strong trust with. But be that person for the people that you work with. Be the one that's advocating for them. Number three is learn how to disagree. And I love that in saying be tactful, but have conversations around when things aren't working between you and I, what are we going to do about it? If we don't have it, have the conversation here, then how do we have the conversation later? But let's not, let's not forget to have the conversation or should we allow each other to cool off and kick each other's ass later? Do we punch each other in the face? What, what works and learn how to disagree for for, you know, before you have those problems, fix the roof before it rains. Because once you learn how to disagree, then you can do it more effectively. Number four is don't fight the synergy. When you, there's a reason that families work together. There's a reason that voices meld. There's a reason that, that people vibe on things. And so don't fight it. Love it. You know, love the fact that, that, that it works. And number five is to love hard. Be kind. Love hard. It's part of our philosophy here at the at the hot box. This world is a crazy place these days. And the more that we can love one another, the more powerful it can all become. There's your top five kick ass. Thank you to Vin A for being here with thank us. You. Thank you to Son of a Digger for the shout out. And thank you to all of you for following us here on the Strategic Hot Box. Head out to our website or to Facebook, Insta, Twitter. Look us up. Hit us up. Until I see you again, get out there and kick some ass.